Our muscles are amazing. They help us walk, talk, pick things up, interact with the world around us. One vital function not often thought about is swallowing. Swallowing is immensely complex, requiring 32 paired muscles to work in perfect sequence, contracting and relaxing top to bottom, protecting our airway, opening our esophagus, all to transfer one bite of food or fluid from our mouth to our stomach. But what if something goes wrong? Swallowing disorders, known as dysphagia, affect a person's ability to eat and drink safely, leading to an increased risk of chest infections, choking and a decreased quality of life. What if those muscles contract bottom to top, or all at once, or not at all, or, or... There are so many ways that swallowing can go wrong. We currently assess dysphagia by using x-rays or a camera to look inside the throat. This lets us see what's happening when someone is swallowing, but it doesn't tell us how those muscles are functioning. We can see the effects, but not always determine the cause. So we used to think all swallowing problems were a result of muscle weakness, but then strengthening exercises didn't work for everyone. So then we looked at muscle coordination and ways to help people swallow more efficiently. So right now in dysphagia, you're either weak or not weak. Or you can't just be not weak. What if your muscles are too tight? Imagine having hand cramps and trying to type on a keyboard. Your muscles aren't weak. They're not uncoordinated, they're just too tight, and that's what's impacting your ability to use them. So currently, our ability to classify dysphagia is limited by the assessments we have access to. In my PhD, I want to begin changing that. I'm at the very beginning stages of looking at a potential assessment tool that we can use to measure muscle function and the state that the muscles are in. As a first step, we are taking tiny electrodes inside of a thin wire that we sit inside the throat. These electrodes will pick up on the electrical activity produced by the muscles as they move and contract, as they do during swallowing. We can use similar methods in other muscles in the body to identify muscle tightness. This is a key feature of some types of cerebral palsy and can have a significant impact on how those people function, but currently we don't know if those muscles for swallowing are impacted the same as the rest of the body. If we can identify muscle tightness, we can classify dysphagia further leading to more specific treatment options and ultimately get more people eating and drinking safely.